What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video, getting into the bread and butter of this channel like I usually do, and that's trade rumors. This video is going to be talking about whether or not there is some truth to a possible trade between the Colorado Avalanche and the Toronto Maple Leafs. So if you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. Um, I want to get to 11K, 15K, 20K, whatever we can get to. I'd appreciate it for Christmas and for the holidays. Make sure to subscribe. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everyone. But this rumor is kind of, I don't know if it started directly on this article. I believe it didn't, but there's been a lot of talk about how the Avalanche have kind of been depleted on their on their blue line, you know, Bowen Byram, Ryan Murray, um, and then you know, Kale McCarr, Devon Taves, Samuel Gerrard. They they've got obviously the Avalanche have always had a really good defensive team. They seem to be able to bring in some pretty good guys. And I mean, when you have McCarr, you're already winning. But the team might need to look into trying to grab some depth defensemen, maybe getting some guys that can play significant minutes or at least some guys that can take on a third pairing role so where they're comfortable to be able to play other guys in that top four, mix them around, move them up and down the lineup. Pretty much how any team would want to replace defensemen that are injured, sick, you know, on the protocol list, whatever it is. But the talk here is that because the Toronto Maple Leafs have been in the rumors for a little bit on possibly moving a defenseman, you know, specifically Justin Hall or Travis Dermott, it could be a possible trade partner, a trade partnership that could work out. Now, of course, it's listed here, but we all know Justin Hall and even at times Travis Dermott has had his struggles in the defensive end. Now, I would say Hall has been a little bit more um, prolific because he's playing more minutes. He's playing in a top four role, although we've seen him go to the bottom pair quite a bit. And he's going to get tested pretty soon here because of the Toronto Maple Leafs who are also depleted on the blue line um, are going to have to use Hall into a bigger role. It's it, it could go bad or really good. Let's just put it at that. Now, a lot of people are probably hearing this and I should have said this a little while ago. Right now, yes, the Toronto Maple Leafs are depleted on their blue line. But once they go through the protocols as well and once they get healthy, the Toronto Maple Leafs still will have too many defensemen. They're going to be very deep. And especially when Rasmus Sandin comes back, they're going to have too many guys. And some people, again, I can already see you typing in the comments, are going to say, well, the, the Leafs blue line hasn't been that great, so it doesn't matter if they have depth. It's not depth. They're not good, blah, blah, blah. Relax for a second. The Leafs have good pieces and, and quite a bit of them. Morgan Riley has been amazing this year. TJ Brody has done what TJ Brody always does. Jake Muzzin has not looked good this year. Justin Hall has not looked good this year. That's a pairing. The Toronto Maple Leafs going into the trade deadline this year, if they continue to play well, which I will be getting into in more videos coming up, they are going to be going after a top four defenseman. They have to be. It's no question. And then you have Lilligren, who's been pretty good. You have Sandine, who's been really good this year. And you also have Travis Dermott. That makes the Leafs... They're, it's not necessarily expendable, but they have those guys available in trade. Not to give away, but to potentially upgrade in another spot. Because I don't think the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be going forward with this blue line going into the trade deadline. And if a team like the Avalanche can toss over a mid to lower pick, the Toronto Maple Leafs might be interested in something like that. Now, with Justin Hall, I wouldn't say his value is completely diminished and, you know, he, you know he's not good or anything like that. He's still a right-handed defenseman at $2 million who can be used in a lot of different situations. Um, as you can see here, we're going to go down to his numbers. He doesn't really put up a lot of numbers offensively. He has previously 20 points and 55 games played. Isn't that bad for a defenseman? Um, you know, a lot of defensemen sometimes don't put up any numbers at all. They focus on one side of the ice. But Hall did contribute. He 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 has contributed. And of course, last season and the season before that, Huz, um, I almost said Huzen. Uh, Mall, uh, oh my goodness, I'm just pairing the names together twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tired, guys, okay? Hall and Muzzin. 
there we go I, i'm correcting myself here that's the funniest moment in this channel's history probably which is kind of sad but anyways um he's they've contributed they've been good the last couple years but this season they just haven't been that good um moving over to travis dermott again same thing good cap hit he's played a little bit better this year he can play both sides uh and he and he does have flashes of brilliance when it comes to the offensive side i mean right when he came in 13 points in 37 games played 17 and 64 not too crazy but again it was good because he came in and he was doing his job but he didn't look too good the past couple seasons but this year i wouldn't say that he's looked bad he's just kind of been there he's been kind of average in and out of the lineup nothing too crazy now i want to get over to jake muzzin because i think a lot of people are also just blaming everything on jake muzzin and i want to say something that was and i want to echo something that was said in downtown Stephen Brown's video make sure to go uh, subscribe to him if you're not already but I think this is something that a lot of people have been thinking with Jake Muzzin you're not necessarily going to just give up on him already because Muzzin's been so good for so long whereas with Hall and Dermott or other guys it doesn't have to just be the Leafs with any team you know forward goalie defenseman whatever it is coach GM if they don't have that consistent track record for a long time you kind of have a shorter leash with them so with Jake Muzzin you're not just going we'll trade him or get rid of him because with other partners with other guys Muzzin has looked pretty good and he probably will he's probably injured I know Steve Dangle has said that a bunch of times but I, honestly I do believe that if Muzzin's playing poorly it's because he plays through an injury because throughout his career he's been very solid he could be on a little bit of a decline right now he could be regressing but I don't believe that's the case if they play him with the right partner. I think it's just finding him maybe another top four fit. He can put up numbers. He plays really well on both sides. We've seen him um, with great flashes uh, of offense at different periods of time. So I'm not just going to give up on Jake Muzzin. Definitely, um, I just think it's a lot easier to um, look at his career numbers and look at his advanced numbers and everything like that and think, okay, we're not going to give up. So I want to go to moneypuck.com right now. I've used this site a few times in videos previously, but this is just the Toronto Maple Leafs defenseman that they've used um, this season. So as you can see, regular season. Now this is five on five. We could use all situations, but then that includes penalty killing and power play. And that could, you know, mess the numbers up for guys that play a lot on the power play or play a lot on the penalty kill. So just looking at some of the numbers here so expected goals i'm going to click on this stat first expected goals this is more of an offensive stat so you're going to see guys like hall and brody who are more likely to be defensive side of the puck they're they're not really producing much def offensively but as you can see jake muzzin still also chips in a little bit offensively so this is where i kind of want to show a little bit of the value of jake muzzin where if he's not always performing defensively he can join the rush and produce offensively we've definitely seen um you know flashes of brilliance like i've said now percentage of shift starts in the offensive zone this is also very important so you're going to see here that the numbers obviously guys like Riley Brody you know Lilligren Dermott Sandine a lot of these guys who can play a little bit more offensively they're getting more of the offensive zone start so if you're looking at numbers and guys who are not really performing defensively you have to give them credit a little bit because they're not getting a lot of that offensive zone time but what I also do want to acknowledge is that percentage of shift starts in the defensive zone TJ Brody also plays a lot of time um, in the defensive zone he can play both situations he plays offensively and defensively he gets a lot of starts in both situations so um, Brody can can kind of do a little bit of everything um, but then you obviously see Muzzin and Hall are taking on a lot of the brunt in terms of the defensive zone so there's just a bunch of numbers here if you guys want to go through it um, I also want to look at giveaways and takeaways uh, in terms of giveaways Muzzin has given away the puck quite a bit but again if you do play it more offensive side you're going to um, have a lot of giveaways takeaways is not the greatest I would like to acknowledge that Hall has much less giveaways um, but also doesn't have uh, that much takeaways either so they're both not really um, giving you a ton in terms of that uh, but again it, this stat to me it's more of like a forward to me I more than likely look at this um, as a forward stat 
this is the one that I would look more at in terms of defenseman is the defensive zone giveaway. So Muzzin and Riley definitely give the puck away a lot in the defensive zone. But there's also something I want to address too with that is that sometimes with these stats, you'll have like, let's say, let's just use two random guys. Let's say it's like Chara and McAvoy, even though they're not on the same team anymore. I'm just using two random names. Because uh, again, Lee fans will just say I'm particularly going after one person and one particular play. No, let's just use, actually, let's just use Chara and Drew Doughty. Let's just go crazy. All right, let's use two different guys. Let's say Chara drops the puck back to a guy like Drew Doughty, right? And now it's not the greatest pass and Doughty has to make a quick move and chips it off the boards and gives the puck away. Sometimes these stats can be a little bit fudged because a defenseman that gives you the puck or a forward that gives you the puck could put you in a bad situation to where you almost have to give the puck away because there's no other option. They've put you in a terrible spot. So you also have to look at that with any one of these guys. So the reason why I'm bringing it up is because it's a stat, but it's still a little bit like you have to look at both sides of the coin here. And the reason why I'm going through these numbers is because, first of all, some of these numbers are not as bad as people are making it out to, to, to be. But there's also some of these numbers that are like, oh boy, that's not really good. So Hall and Muzzin haven't been that great. Do you, do you try something else by trading Justin Hall if a team is interested and then upgrade in that top four? That's what I would personally do. And I think that that's an option. Um, but I do want to make a bigger video talking about all the different leaf pieces that could potentially be trade targets. But for this specific rumor, um, because there's also no hockey right now and I wanted to try to give you guys some sort of content and some sort of opinion, I've wanted to do this for a little while now. I think that there could be some weight to this, and it's not just because of the Avalanche and the Leafs. I think a lot of teams right now, especially with all the players going on the protocol list, including the Toronto Maple Leafs, there could be a lot of names shuffled around. There could be a bunch of trades because teams are going to be looking to fill their rosters, and especially as we get closer to the trade deadline it's going to be a little bit of a madness, uh, a little bit of a shuffle here. So um, I wanted to to bring up these numbers just to say, look, Muzzin, Hall, haven't been that good. Are you trading Muzzin? No. So it kind of looks at Justin Hall. You kind of look at Justin Hall and think, okay, this guy might be the odd man out if the Leafs are trying to upgrade and have to shed salary because he's at $2 million per season. Is it a good contract? Sure. Has he been playing up to it? You could argue that maybe, yes, no, he has played up to it. So you have to address the whole situation and see if trading him makes sense. Trading Travis Dermott could make sense, but he's a cheaper number. He's looked a little bit better this year. So I don't know if the Leafs want to give up on him right away. I think Hall would probably be the guy where they might have him as the odd man out. So let me know what you guys think. I know this video kind of went a little bit into a different universe here but there wasn't too much to talk about in terms of just that specific rumor i wanted to broaden it a little bit so if you are new here make sure to like this video and subscribe i'd really appreciate it and hopefully i'll see you in the next video or stream peace